enzymes. So enzymes are organic catalysts. Okay, let's break that down. Now enzymes are considered to be organic because they are made up of molecules such as carbon and hydrogen. And they are catalysts because they either speed up or slow down the rate of chemical reactions in the body without taking part in the reactions. Now this is very very important because you find that by controlling the rate at which chemical reactions take place, they ensure that these reactions proceed at a rate which is enough to sustain life. So you find that without enzymes, some chemical reactions in the body will occur very slowly and this will not be enough to support body functions. There are two types of enzymes, intracellular enzymes and extracellular enzymes. Now let's define these two. What are intracellular enzymes? So these are enzymes that are produced in the cells and function within the same cells that produce them. Now a good example are respiratory enzymes. So respiratory enzymes are enzymes that are involved in speeding up the rate of respiration within the cells. So these are produced within the cell and function within that same cell. Extracellular enzymes, on the other hand, are produced in the cells but function outside the cells that produce them. Example are some digestive enzymes like trypsin. Trypsin is produced in the pancreas but is then transported by blood to the small intestine where it functions. So this is an example of an extracellular enzyme. Moving on to properties of enzymes, what are the characteristics of enzymes? Number one is that enzymes are sensitive to changes in temperature and pH. That means that if you were to change the temperature or pH, it will end up affecting the enzymes. And the reason why this is so is because enzymes are made from protein. They are protein in nature. And proteins, no matter what they are, will always be affected by changes in temperature and pH. So at low temperatures, enzymes are usually inactive. As you increase the temperature, enzymes become more active up to the optimum point. At this point, the rate of enzyme reaction tends to be highest. Now, if you were to increase temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius, then it will end up denaturing the enzymes, destroying the structure. Same goes for pH. So enzymes are sensitive to temperature and pH changes. Another characteristic of enzymes is that they are substrate specific. So this means that a particular enzyme will only act on a particular substrate. But what does a substrate mean? So a substrate is the food substance on which an enzyme acts on. So giving an example, enzyme maltase will only catalyze maltose, that is it will only break down maltose to form glucose and no other substrates. Enzymes do not take part in the chemical reactions they catalyze. That means that at the end of the chemical reaction, they remain unchanged and are not used up. So how does this happen? Enzymes work by binding onto substrates in order to facilitate the reaction. But at the end of the reaction, the enzyme releases itself unchanged and is available to catalyze more reactions. And as such, it can be used again and again. Last one. Reactions catalyzed by enzymes are reversible. This simply means that reactions catalyzed by enzymes can proceed in either direction. In other words, an enzyme can help facilitate the conversion of reactants into products, but it can also assist in converting the products back into the reactants. Let me give an example. Enzyme maltase. Enzyme maltase can catalyze the breakdown of maltose in order to form glucose molecules. At the same time, it can also assist in joining glucose molecules in order to form maltose. And therefore, enzyme catalyzed reactions are reversible. So this brings us to the end of this lesson. See you in our next lesson where we will be discussing factors affecting the rate of enzyme reactions.